Alrighty then. Hello everybody. I am Dr. X and welcome to my first let's play of Total War Shogun 2. A very old game by now, but it's one of my favorites, so I figured it would be a good one to start my let's play with. We're going to be playing a campaign in the Shogun 2. As you can see, I own both the both the main expansions. Rise and Fall of the Samurai, but let's just keep it simple and play Shogun 2. So, I want to be playing today, and for hopefully the foreseeable future, uh, one of the cool clans. You have many, so you have Josukabe, Shimatsu, Hojo. I don't know if how famous all of these are, but uh, I know Oda and I know Tokugawa. I know Tokugawa because they eventually win the Sengoku Jidai where this uh, game is set. And they win by becoming Shogun and defeating all the others. But I'm going to be playing Oda. And I believe they were the main rivals of Tokugawa. And as you can see in the game, they have improved morale for all Ashigaru units, which are basically peasants you can recruit anywhere without needing special recruitment buildings so they have improved morale and they are cheaper so you can have bigger armies basically and yeah I like them they have a cool color scheme as well the yellow and purple with black so yeah let's play I'm going to be playing at very hard difficulty level you can also do legendary but that means it's basically a uh, early version of Iron Man mode I think uh, Shogun 2 was one of the first games at least that I'm aware of which did a similar thing as Iron Man mode so yeah it's basically very hard is the same but you can go back to a previous save if you messed something up and legendary is yeah no saves coming allowed basically uh, we're going to be playing a long campaign to capture and hold 40 provinces including yeah some of the names mentioned here we start with the bright yellow uh, bright green one i'm sorry and we need to capture at least the shaded green ones and then in total 40 of the whole map of japan which is i think something like two-thirds of the map maybe a bit less yeah and yeah i'm playing it very hard i've beaten the campaign several times at hard le difficulty level at uh, which is yeah slightly challenging in the beginning but after a while it becomes easy enough so let's try it at very hard uh, there's some backstory in here from the Oda clan but yeah let's just start let's let me check these options yeah no advisor help that's not needed I want to see the CPU mu moves 40 minute battle time limit that's okay and I do not want to drop in battles because they are nonsense. So accept. And let's start the game. So I believe the rivalry in at the end of the Sengoku Jidai. So that which means I think age of country of at war in Japan. The rivalry at the end at least was between the Oda and or his descendants and the Tokugawa. Uh, I'll let them explain. This it. is Sengoku Jidai, the age of the country at war. For 200 years, the Ashikaga shoguns have ruled from Kyoto. Great splendor and power were theirs. Now, the overmighty clans no longer obey. The time has come for a new warlord to become Shogun. But who will be victorious? Other lands have always provided for our people. Enemies are many and envious. They threaten our borders and look for any weakness. Others may cover titles, but Ashigaru, common spearmen, 
are the bedrock of order might. All know us. The commanders of a thousand spears. It is an honor to lead such a man. Our generals are battle-scarred veterans of a righteous strength. Fisher Mountain, the war god has awoken. Now is the time to defeat our enemies. All will bow to the other clan. We wait no longer. Destiny calls. We are the order. So I'm not going to. These are trying one. times. So as you heard from the intro movie, Oda have very powerful peasant warriors, the Ashigaru, which are cheap and recruitable anywhere. So quite useful I think at least in the early game towards the late game you get more of the samurai units in there and many of the other clans have at least one type of samurai unit as a improved version basically of the base version but Oda only has the base version but they have cheaper Ashikaru so yeah I will hope to swarm at least uh, some of their uh, samurai uh, yeah this is the first mission Unification of the Oda. All clans start with a simple mission just to get you started. This one means uh, basically defeat this rebel army which is here at my bottom of my screen. Uh, yeah, and it will give me a bonus of 25% wealth generated by buildings, which is nice. It adds to the income. But it's always a bit tricky with this game because they talk about improving wealth. But if our daimyo is to become sure. If I show you the information panel of a settlement, you can see it tells you the wealth, but also the tax rate. And so the income from the province is the tax rate times the wealth, basically. So if you think you're, yeah. And this is, as you can see, influenced by many factors, which are mostly set at zero at the beginning of the game. But especially as you grow and you have more and more provinces, administration costs will basically annihilate your tax rate to close to yeah 10 percent maybe there are some ways to offset that but it will be uh, yeah your growth will not immediately add all the money basically so your tax rate will your effective tax rate will go down as you claim more provinces but we will see that later in the game but right now yeah we need to start this is our main province of Owari with the castle which is named Inazawa to know probably it's the hometown of the Oda we have as you can see our fort a Yari drill yard so we can train Yari samurai here if you want uh, some yeah every province has rice paddies or farms basically and roads and then some um, then yeah basically all other all provinces have some specialties this one has a port some other provinces have a port and something more but usually it's three things uh, now as a start of the game we need to figure out what we want to do well like the mission told us we need to defeat this army of rebels to get the bonus to the income and to the wealth basically uh, as you can see, we cannot see what is in the army. So it, we know there is one group of bow Ashigaru, basically basic archers. But the other four we do not know. But our army is over here. It consists of also one archers, three Yari Ashigaru and one Yari Samurai and our general, who is a very powerful cavalry unit basically. And this is a regular general as you can see and we have one army more in our province capital and that is Oda Nobuhide he's our daimyo our clan leader basically so we want to keep him alive for now we can check his family so here's the summary of our clan with the provinces we need to capture and how many we have of the victory provinces and in and total provinces 
our current mission. We have some enemies, so we have Saito clan, Tokugawa clan, and Imagawa clan as enemies, and we have we are, yeah, we are trading with the Kitabetake. They are not our allies, but yeah, we get some money from that trade. Here we can see the family of our daimyo. So Oda Nobuhide is our daimyo, basically our warlord king. And his son is the famous Oda Nobunaga, who yeah, is the main uh, focus of many of the other works of fiction in the Sengoku Jidai. I think he's the, one of the famous warlords, so probably he will take over once his father dies. His father is already 35 years old. So, yeah, if this game runs from, what year is it, 1545 to 1600, yeah, we can expect that maybe even uh, Oda Nobunaga, who is already 12 years old, will also not make it to the end of that time. But, yeah, we'll see. Ma mostly, uh, I beat the game and capturing the 40 provinces already long before you reach the year 1600. But we'll see. So, Oda Nobunaga also has a brother, it's the second son of Oda Nobuhide, and here you can see the regular general, Takayama Muneyori, and he is uh, yeah, 27 years old, he's also the commissioner for warfare right now, so that gives him a few bonuses, and also the complete clan has some bonuses, which is nice, I'm going to change this one to one of the other ones, because this one is not that useful, at least not in the early game. And this scales also with the rank of your general. So as your general increases rank by winning battles, uh, yeah, his bonuses increase as well. So you can see here you have the commissioner for supply, which gives you replenishment rate to all units, which is nice. And also campaign movement range for this army of the the army of the of this general, basically. So especially the replenishment rate is quite nice in the beginning of the game as yeah, replenishment rate is quite uh, a problem in the early game because no provinces have upgraded fortresses or upgraded roads which provide you with uh, the regular way of getting replenishment rate. So the replenishment rate of most armies in the beginning of the game is quite poor. So you can offset that with making your first general the commissioner for supply. You also have the Commissioner for Finance, which is nice for the later game to get some uh, tax rate bonuses and an upkeep, uh, yeah, how do you call it? upkeep uh, discount, which is also quite nice. Uh, and Commissioner for Development, this is nice if you have a good general with this You can and you capture some provinces, it'll take less time for the province to become pacified so that you don't have to leave a garrison to basically prevent rebellions from uh, the recently conquered people. So that's also nice. And the uh, cheaper buildings across all provinces is a nice bonus as well. But yeah, I, you m mainly use this one if I have a good general, which I want to conquer quickly with, so that, you, that he doesn't have to leave his army behind every time he conquers a province. But like I said, yeah, we cannot change this in the first turn, so I'll probably change it next turn if I remember. I will change it to the commissioner for supply. All right. So first things first, as you can see, this army is consisting of uh, five units. This one consists of six units, one of which is the general, which you want to keep alive, but he's also one of the most powerful units, especially in the early game. So you also want to use him. So that's usually a bit of a, yeah, how do you call it? A two-sided coin, maybe. So you want to use him, but you also want to save him. Uh, but as you can see, this is only a, uh, an army with only six units. So it's quite evenly matched with this one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this general, Oda Nobuhide. I'm going to set him in the field to act as reinforcements, because he's also a general unit, so he's a powerful cavalry unit. So the red arrow you see means that any combat initiated against that army, uh, this army will act as reinforcements too. So that's nice, so I can park him over here. Get the red arrow, so I can uh, have my daimyo acting as reinforcements here to help 
uh, yeah, with defeating this army. As you can see, an army has a red circle around it. So both enemy armies and friendly armies have it. And this area means basically uh, it's area where opposing armies cannot pass through. So you can use that circle on your own armies to see how you can block certain choke points on the map. So the map now is uh, yeah, not very explored. You can see some drawings of many provinces, but not much more. You know where the castles are. You know where some other things are, like uh, the farm is over there, which you can attack, for example, to yeah, destroy a, uh, income in the uh, province. But what I want to see show is that the red circle, you can use it in, for example, a choke point, which you can see here. You can park your army in the middle and no enemy armies can pass by and they have to attack you if they want to yeah basically come towards you so with that I could put an army in here somewhere or on a bridge which is even a mo more narrow choke point and a more obvious choke point it's also easier defendable but that's another story but yeah you can block choke points with your armies to prevent sneaky backstabbing attacks on your castles which are maybe less defended but, okay, enough talking for now, let's initiate the first battle. So you cannot regularly move into the red circle around an army unless you attack it. So let's attack this army with my army. As you can see, the game automatically gives me a sort of overview of my strength versus the enemy's strength. And you can see here also in numbers uh, yeah, the strength of both armies so mine is 960 men uh, with some reinforcing 40 men so the general has a group of 40 with him and this general has 40 for his own cavalry and some more footmen and the enemy has 800 men with the most scary unit being I think the Yari cavalry it's really fast and have a really powerful charge attack which they can use to hit you in the flanks or in the rear to quickly decimate especially these Oda Yari Ashigaru units which are cheap but also not very strong so if they get hit in the flanks yeah they're goners especially when they get when they're hit with a very powerful cavalry unit so our regular infantry is our Yari Samurai which will be yeah doing most of the fighting uh, yeah, let's do a quick save before starting the battle. So just so that I, if I screw up, I can go back and try again. You never know. I usually, uh, when I play this game, the, e the early battles are relatively easy. But yeah, I've never done it while narrating. So I don't know. Maybe I lose focus while trying to s come up with something to say. And then I get flanked by these uh, scary Yeri cavalries. So let's do it. So on the loading screen you see a nice overview picture of the map you're going to fight in. Yellow area is my alliance, as you see, yellow. The enemy will be sitting in the red area, that's where you can deploy your armies before the battle. Uh, you cannot see how the enemy is deployed. So yeah, you, de you, you pick your formation and then the enemy consecutively picks his formation and then when the fighting starts you can see where the enemy is uh, stationed uh, this is always the beginning of a battle where you can select basically or roll dice for which weather you will fight in so you have three chances and the current weather is fog which reduces visibility uh, and which in turn reduces the accuracy and range of missile units uh, and also it conceals units at longer distance. Uh, yeah, I don't like playing in fog. It just muddies the view. And yeah, I'm usually quite heavy with the archers. So I want clear skies. So let's wait. Now rain. So this has a bad impact on gunpowder units mostly. And it's some fatigue uh, issues. Let's see if we can get a nice dry day. Yeah. So no adverse effects on a nice and dry day. So let's start deployment. So here you can see the yeah the game basically deploys your army in a sort of 
arbitrary formation. It's usually two lines or three lines with archers, melee units, and then your cavalry. Uh, I would advise changing this formation at least a little bit. So I usually put my archers at least in the center of the formation. Put my general a bit nearby. You can see his influence radius where he improves morale of the units. Uh, hold on, I have four units. Let's make the formation a bit symmetric. Like that. And then I select all of them. Press Ctrl 1 to lock them into a group. So now this formation is locked like this. Um, as you can see from the map, I'll make it larger for a moment. There is some hills basically on my right and on the left center of the map. So if I move forward, you can see them here as well. Um, I'm going to imagine, I think, that the enemy will deploy on the hill. So there are some slopes. And those are easily defendable by uh, yeah by spear infantry. So he will probably deploy there, so I will have to dig him out with my units. You can see on the map as well the blue arrow. This is where my reinforcements will enter the field. So my daimyo and his cavalry unit will be entering from this side. So that's basically if I view over to this side, you see my view cone. He will enter somewhere here. He can help with dislodging the enemy from their hill. So and I will and because I think they will be yeah, deploying on the hill, I will deploy also to the right of my deployment zone, just so that I have a slightly shorter range to the to cover. My units fatigue a little bit less. I'll be in better fighting shape. So let's go. As you can see, the enemy is already deployed on the hill, so I will move my units forward. If I press spacebar, you can see the intended ending position of the units, which is nice, and also the arrow of where they are coming from. So you can have a quick overview of where all your units are going if they are moving. Which I think is quite useful. I use it a lot. Also to see if I want to tweak the formation a little bit. I'm like, okay, wait, I don't want them here. I want them maybe a bit like this. So if I right click and hold the formation, I can change it. If you have one unit selected or a flexible formation, you can even uh, make it make every unit of men make them wider and uh, wider and narrower. But this is nice, so you can do like that and change their speed back to walking speed because if they run, they tire, which is not necessary because there's plenty of time. I also have the general over here. Ah, here he is at the edge of the forest. So. I will move him up, just keep him on the flank, let's see if I can scare them out of their position, especially those archers, because they are annoying if they are protected by uh, spearmen, makes them very difficult to destroy, especially because we are basically one on one with approximately the same skilled uh, archers, basically no skill, so base level stats, as you can see on the right of the screen right now. And yeah, you want those uh, archers, you want your archers basically to outgun the enemy archers so that you can just pick off the enemy and force him to come at you so that you can defend. Because the nice thing about the Yari Ashigaru is that they have the uh, Yari wall formation, which basically puts all of them into a very tightly packed spear wall, which makes them very difficult to maneuver, but very powerful in a frontal attack. It's especially useful in defense, so you're, if you get a nice line of Yari Ashigaru in a spear wall formation, you can basically hold off the much stronger uh, samurai units until you manage to yeah, get your cavalry or some other units around the flank and hit the, their samurai in the back. That's usually how I play, at least. So let's get this formation, and you can see here they're putting their bow Ashigaru at the front, which I don't like, because I want to shoot at their spearmen and not at their bowmen. I want to draw their bowmen out and ride them down with my cavalry. So let's see where I will send my units. I think if I go to the left, that's the best side. So I will move the formation here, make sure that they don't run but just walk. And probably they will adjust their formation to face me more. And maybe our 
maybe not. I can hit them in the flank with the general. Now that I'm thinking about it, I can even halt the Ashigaru. Backspace halts them, by the way. Just a quick button, which is nice. So now that my spearmen are moving to the left, if I station my archers here in the light forest, I can shoot at anything that tries to come down this slope. I try to face the... Uh, Anything that will try to face the spearmen, I can shoot at. And then hopefully their archers will come down to shoot back at me. And then I can ride them down with the cap. So this general, he can move a bit forward. So as you can see, they're moving their formation. Send some more units to the left. And I'll let him run for now because it's only a short distance. Quickly allows my units to get a different positioning. So, as you can see, there's some motion going on on this side. So, let's get my archers in there to mess with them. Wait, what's going on? They're doing something weird with their formation not needed let's just send them like this send some spearmen with them to protect them from what i will think happen is that their cavalry will charge at me so if you can manage to hit them uh, something's happening with the cavalry so let's get these guys forward Hit to the left these guys can also move a bit forward. General, they move into the gap. So, they're sending archers to the left. So I can move my archers forward a bit. So these guys need to retreat quickly before their, their archers completely annihilate me because as you can maybe tell Sengoku Jidai era Japanese armies nobody uses a shield which means everyone is vulnerable to arrows let's put them on skirmish mode because otherwise they will hit like crazy get some guys forward to maybe mess with their archers over here okay something's going on let's get these spearmen to the front make sure that they, that they block the enemy and that my cavalry is standing by to hit them in the back Got my general to attack those archers. And in the meantime, my infantry can move forwards. Oh, oh no! So, uh, Spearman trying to fight with my general, which is scary because cavalry Our are very is bad in against. Grave danger, my lord. This general also needs to retreat quickly. Let's go, let's go. Okay. Alright, so his cavalry charged right into my spearmen, so you can see they're wavering already. Almost destroyed. Let's hit them with their archers a little bit. Get these guys to charge into the back of those samurai, because they are quite powerful. Even though I've got my own samurai fighting them, it's better to just kill off the samurai as quickly as possible. So 
they're wavering, which is good. Almost forgot to use the Inspire ability my lord! to get my guys fighting a bit harder. Okay, so now they're retreating. Now it's important to kill as many as possible of them. But at least... Yeah. So, I've won. At least this battle. <coughs> Excuse me. And now the game asks me, do I want to end the battle or do I want to continue? Uh, end the battle, it just automatically calculates how many of the enemy fleeing units I would be able to kill. I think it does something like that at least. Uh, and with continue, you can select yourself to chase down the enemy until they basically run off the edge of the map. Uh, which can be sometimes useful. Uh, but it's mainly only useful if you have units which can outrun the enemy. Which, yeah, only my cavalry could do, but there are only very few of them. Only 28 left in both units. So it's not very, uh, not very useful to try to take out more of them. I think the game automatically calculates as well that I will probably kill quite a lot of them. Uh, let's, so let's do end battle. It says decisive victory. I can save the replay, that's not necessary. I'm already recording. Uh, yeah, there can be no doubt this is a great victory. The enemy are dead or running for their lives. Yeah, most of, most of them are running for their lives. So let's find out how many I destroyed. So as you can see, the loading screens have some quite nice art. I like this uh, old Japanese style of uh, drawings. So the entire game is basically infused with uh, with that that style of drawing. I really like it. So as you can see, I deployed a thousand men in total. He deployed 800. I lost some 255, so I have some remaining. And I killed all of them, so they have nothing remaining, which is very nice. That usually never happens to me. Usually they retreat and then you have to chase them down uh, their last few dying and hiding units. But this is good. Now I uh, can just focus on my real enemies, which you will see later. So here you see a nice animation of the army being crushed. And the mission is successful. So now I get four turns of 25% extra wealth generated by buildings. Which is nice, it gives me a bit more income to play with in the beginning of the game. Always good. Especially considering I have well, only one province. <coughs> Excuse me. So, for the rest of this turn, we can start to work on the economy a bit. Constructing, maybe training some units. Maybe seeing what else is going on. So as you can see here, there's a small mini-map on the top of the screen. I can make it a bit bigger. Yellow, that's me. There's uh, to the north, the province of Mino, owned by the Saito clan, with whom I'm at war. You can also see it on the big map with the red border. That's my enemy. There's also an enemy to the south in Mikawa. That's the Tokugawa clan. I'm also at war with them. And because the Tokugawa are vassals of the Imagawa clan, I'm also at war with the Imagawa clan, which means I have quite a lot of enemies and no friends to begin with. So now it's just a task of defeating all of them. So right now you can see my army, yeah, we had some casualties. You see the small plus above the units showing me how much my units will replenish each turn and how many turns until they are fully replenished and because the infrastructure in the beginning of the game is basically zero you replenish quite slowly so the general replenishes one guy per turn so 12 turns to get to 40 the samurai they replenish ah, 13 guys not that bad so two turns until fully replenished and the ashigaru they get 16 guys per turn so also a few turns until they are fully replenished six turns maximum for this guy So, let's send the army to the southern border, because this is the most valuable province to capture. You can see here on the drawing, there's a horse. That means that this 
province specializes in war horses, which allows me to build superior uh, cavalry units if I capture it. So that's what I'm going to do. Try to capture it at least next turn. So you can see, yeah, here's the Tokugawa clan, the white flag with the golden Tokugawa logo. I think they call it a mom in this game in Japanese. I don't know if it's the normal name for it. So I'm going to send Oda Nobuhide as a reinforcement together with this army. And the reason I'm, that I'm not putting him inside this army, even though there's space, I think you can, yeah, I know for sure, you can put 20 units in a single army. So you get a nice big row almost up to here. Uh, the reason I'm not putting him, this general, into this army is that if I show you, right click on the general, this battle which he won gave him 10 experience. And you need experience to get skills, which you, I will show once we're there. But winning a battle with a general gain, gains you 10 experience, which is nice. It grows you in level, and every level you get. Uh, yeah, more skills which make the general better. But if you see the reinforcement, he helped in the battle, but he only gained three experience. And if he were situated inside the other army, the the main general still gets ten experience points, but the supporting generals inside the army they only get one experience point per battle won. So this at least grows uh, the reinforcing army's general. Uh, the the skill level, the experience, three times as fast. So I always try to keep all my generals in separate stacks to make sure that they all get the maximum number of experience. It does make him sometimes a bit vulnerable if you for some reason cannot get them within reinforcement range of each other. Then yeah, it can be uh, quite easy. Yeah, he can be he can be quite weak by himself if he gets overrun by a bigger army. So keep them together or put him in a. If, especially if his stack is almost down to zero, put him in the army or put him in a settlement or whatever. Make sure that your generals don't die, they're important. That's the main uh, the main issue. Yeah, as you can see here, also the daimyo has some personality traits. Skills will also show up in this view, if, once you have skills. Uh, you can see this general is impolite, so minus 20 diplomatic relations. So yeah, nobody likes me. Or at least my ja my my daimyo, but he's also brave, which gives all units extra morale, which is nice, especially if you're in a very tight battle and you're uh, very close. Especially if you're closely matched in uh, in strength between the armies, then usually the army with the better morale wins, because they can fight for just a bit longer, take just a bit more casualties before deciding that it's all enough. So if you have a bit more. Uh, if you have a bit more morale than the, op the opposition, it means that their army will ju decide that it's enough just a little bit sooner and you can chase them down. Because once one unit des decides to flee, it's usually a chain reaction with all the other units. When they see their uh, buddies fleeing, they know it's over and, they and all of them start fleeing. So it's always nice to have a bit more morale than the opposing army. So right now I'm positioning my army just on the border with the enemy so that I can wait for him to come to me which I expect will happen soon because I think he also has an army of like five or six units somewhere hiding around here here he has just one I think probably it's one of his generals but somewhere just outside of vision there should be a second army hiding so let's see I can recruit here some units and also uh, upgrade my province. So as you can see there are some locked uh, slots for buildings and my fort here. If you upgrade the fort you get more building slots so you can train more units or improve your economy. Uh, because this is a very wealthy province I will be uh, focusing this one mostly on uh, economy. So it starts with a Yari drill yard but I don't really need a Yari drill yard here because I don't want to train more uh, Yari Samurai for the beginning. I want to first train some Ashigaru. They take one turn. Samurai take two turns. They are quite a lot stronger, but they are also very expensive in upkeep. So as you can see here, 
173 gold, I think, for keep for the upkeep for one unit of Yari Samurai. But one unit of Oda Yari Ashigaru costs only 58. So that's one third of the Yari Samurai. And I think the regular uh, normal priced Yari Ashigaru, so of the other clans, they cost, I think, half of the price in upkeep of a Samurai unit. So, yeah, I can field three uh, Ashigaru units for one Samurai unit, which is quite big. So I can uh, get quite big armies at the same price. But, yeah, like I said, Yari Samurai, well, a lot stronger than Ashigaru, as you can also see in the stat screen to the left. So this Ashigaru has 7 morale, 5 attack, 4 defense, and almost no armor, basically. While a samurai unit has 10 morale, 6 attack, 8 defense, also some charge bonus and a lot more armor. So they are quite a lot more powerful. But if you use them correctly, Yari Ashigaru, especially the Oda ones, can be really powerful. And then also the Bow Ashigaru, same story. Quite weak. You, have, you, you can train Bow, uh, bow Samurai. They are quite good, but again... Bo Ashigaru from Oda, very cheap, good morale. Just train a lot of them. Swarm the enemy. So that's what I will do. And because I want to focus this province on economy, I'm also going to dismantle the drill yard. So next turn there will be an empty slot here. And next turn I will be building something for the economy there. But right now, I will first improve the economy via other means which is improved irrigation so improving the farms because if there is very fertile soil here that means that the farms add a lot of wealth which is nice so and also because they provide food as you can see on the left food is needed to for upkeep of bigger castles so a regular castle consumes food one and if you go to a stronghold consumes two food and every level consumes one more food so you want to match the farms to the level of your uh, castle because if you have not enough food it will cost you in public order which is very annoying and it will also cost you in income in the end so right now i'm going to start with improving the farms and then the money is already gone because i am also recruiting two units one more thing before going to the next turn is I need to pick what uh, art I want to invest in so you can go with the Bushido tree which is all military and the way of chi tree is basically all civics so yeah here you start with uh, if you research the Bushido you get access to the sword school and with sword school you get katana samurai which are yeah, they have similar stats to the Yari Samurai, so the Spearmen. But they have a sword instead of a spear, so no bonus to cavalry, but a bigger attack and a li bit, little bit less defense, I think. If I know it by heart. So they're nice for charging down the enemy uh, infantry. So, yeah. That's, those are usually the basic units you use, the Yari Samurai and the, Yari and the Katana Samurai. So this is nice and also adds morale to all units. Way of Chi, oh, it, this this unlocks the market and also increases the tax rate. So actually I want this one first and it takes two turns because I want to build the market in my province. So I'm thinking if I should demolish the drill yard for the samurai or should I train a more samurai? No, I'm going to do it like this. I will demolish it and then in two turns I will build the market should be okay here you can also see the last stop is the finance tab you can see I have some tax income it's also repeated here trade income and other and they call it clan estates that's this is basically your basic income because otherwise if you only have one province you get very little income you cannot afford an army from that because my army which is basically tiny is already costing me 640 per turn so that means that, yeah, 
I can only afford yeah this much basically for now okay so now that that's all covered I don't have any more money I could theoretically trade more units but the starting province only has two recruitment slots so putting in more it already takes two turns so it makes no sense to invest that money already so I just cancel it keep keep a bit more money in the bank uh, have more flexibility next turn also yeah it's not enough money for constructing this costs 850 to upgrade the roads it costs 850 to upgrade the ports so yeah let's go to the next turn so now you can see all of the other clans are doing their turns there yeah, in the beginning yeah, of the game there are a lot uh, this is a nice uh, video charges. clip and explanation but of the yari ashigaru you I get the same similar clip down the for the bow ashigaru so every time you recruit a unit which you have not recruited before you get a nice clip there are some some video clips from other for other things as well but yeah i'm going to skip them i've seen them a thousand times already it's not really needed so now the game gives me the mission to become master of sojitsu which i think means something like spear mastery or something i don't know exactly so they're telling me uh, to in to research a certain art way of the spear this will give me a free oda yari ashigaru but they are so cheap so the reward is basically meaningless for me it's also a tech yeah which is all the way here so it means i need to re research bushido and then strategy of defense and then way of the spear before I get that bonus which is only one spearman so yeah I can recruit them for way cheap so it's really not needed so as you can see during the previous turn we get some events so this is the event of the mission we already saw we get the quartermaster's report so Owari trained both Oda Yari Ashigaru and Oda Bo Ashigaru and as we saw during the end turn phase Tokawa moved an army into my lands but he did not attack me directly so as you can see he has one two three four five six units in his army i have six in this one and also my reinforcing general so probably he thinks he cannot defeat my army so he will try to go around me to capture the castle town but this means that if his whole army is over here, this castle town will probably be undefended. So let's take my army and slowly walk a bit forward. Yeah, as you can see, the flag has only the one grey unit. So there is nothing in this, ar in, this, uh, in this province, in this castle. Because yeah, there's only an agent, a Matsuke, but I will explain that later. And no tab for army, so he has no units here. Except for the one which is grayed out, which is a garrison unit, which you cannot remove from your provinces. So he took his whole army and he's trying to march around my army towards my capital. But he left his own capital undefended. So now I can just come in and capture his capital. So I will send my daimyo as reinforcements and take my general. As you can see, now that I'm stationed in enemy province no longer getting reinforcements so there's a nice dash through the logo now we can attack his castle town As you can see the balance of power is completely in my favor the yellow bar i will do always a quick save always good to do if you do something stupid and as you can see i have a little over 800 units he has 60 60 guys samurai retainers so yeah, they're not even archers, they're only samurai uh, with a sword. So my Oda Boashigaru will really make mincemeat of them. And this is just not a fair battle. So here you see the nice map of one of the siege battles. So every siege battle basically there's the castle in the middle. Uh, most of the case the, you can, the defender can deploy his units also outside of the castle. But if I'm defending I never do that because it's just inviting them to be destroyed you see the yellow area you can deploy the attacker can deploy all around so you can attack from multiple directions which is always a good idea if you are attacking a well defended fortress to 
try to lure away the enemy from one other edge of the fortress so that you can climb up the walls there. But yeah, that's right now not needed. There's only one defending unit and it's slow, weak, whatever. Yeah, I'm not going to attack in the rain, so let's wait. So it's dry, start the deployment. And let's get the army in position to attack the castle. So I'll select the whole army. Put them in a group. Now I will select a simple standard formation. I usually use flying geese as a standard formation because it's close or almost exactly what I usually position by hand. So archers in the front, spearmen on the second row and then the cavalry behind that. I will, And this is now not a locked formation but a draggable formation so like like you do with single units, you can also do with the complete formation. So I will set them up in a slightly wide formation. And now let's start the battle. And because this castle is basically only defended by these samurai retainers, we can just move straight in. We don't have to check where all their archers are or anything like that. We can just move in and get the Boa Shigaru to do their work destroy the uh, samurai retainers you can also see Oda Nobuhide the other general he's coming in from the side as well yeah let's bring him forward as well he can maybe inspire some people I will go fast forward because otherwise we're waiting forever for this to end so you can see during fast forward it's I think two times or three times the speed speed up the game by four times even it says okay so you can hear that the sound effects die out, only the music keeps playing. And all the men are walking like crazy. But because this battle is so easy, I get the time to show you some of the nice graphics of the game. So like I said, this is a very old game, I think 2011 or 2012. But if you see, if I slow down a bit... I think the graphics still hold up quite well to this day. You see the level of detail. All of them have individual armors, usually from a randomized set. So yeah, you will see some. You'll see, of course, the same breastplates, the same shoulder plates, the same helmets, but they will be mixed around. Quite nice. It really breaks up the monotony what you usually see in the the, the older uh, Total War games where all of the units had the exactly the same uniform and it just looked like they were clones. So in this game, and I think they already did it in uh, Medieval 2, they have the nice uh, yeah, randomized sets of armor applicable to the unit, so yeah, you get uh, not less monotonous. Yeah, you see the nice arrows flying through the air. So my general is also here. Let's do Inspire to get the accuracy of them up. I think also the fire rate goes up, let's double check. Yeah, so the reload skill and the accuracy go up. Which is nice, so now more arrows are hitting the enemy. As you can see, they're already down by a third. And yeah, they can't do anything. They, I really wouldn't be one, wouldn't want to be one of these samurai guys. You're basically just waiting to die from a hail of arrows. That was a nice death animation. And like I said in the previous battle, the Japanese did not use shields in this period. Or any period, I think. I'm not sure exactly, but at least in the Sengoku Jidai period, shields were not used. So everybody is very vulnerable to arrows. Oh, they're now walking out of the range of my arrows. See the last volley falling short, so... I'll select them to attack from closer range and speed up the game again. You can also see the fortress. It's quite nice and detailed. It's now still just uh, basically a flattened earth mound with a wooden castle on top. There's a small, uh, small house in the middle, a nice wall around. The wall is very nice. You can station while defending your archers. You can station... While defending, you can station your archers in the walls and they will shoot from behind the, the walls, which will protect them a bit from uh, 
archers fire enemy archers firing into the walls. So yeah, my archers need to try to finish off these last three guys. And then I will have one. Oh. But apparently they're not able to get these last few guys. So. Oh, now they're coming forward, so now they're just waiting to die. Yep. So that's it. This battle. Easy, no casualties. So again some nice loading screen art. There's always a tooltip or tech tip, uh, you, however you want to call it, in the loading screens. It's nice, yeah. So losses, they lost everything. So close. Now, because he won his second battle, he gets his first star. Uh, yeah, and now I've captured the province. And they predict minus seven public order if I peacefully occupy. Wow, I don't remember that being that bad. Maybe that's from playing on very on yeah, very hard mode. I don't know, but let's peacefully occupy because I want to use the the province. And I don't want to loot it because then it destroys the wealth, makes everyone very unhappy, and it also decreases my uh, diplomatic score even further. So people hate me even more. I'm not going to make them a vessel because I want the province for myself, and I'm not. I don't care if they, yeah, if the clan disappears. So peacefully occupy. Yeah, my general increased in rank, like I mentioned. So now this province is mine. If I double click, you can see the public order in the province. Mine is seven. This is crazy. So it's determined by the castle repressing four. The army is repressing six. But the negative public order... Uh, influences are yeah taxes minus four it's in every province but because i recently captured this one they have resistance to invaders minus 13 holy shit that means yeah i cannot get seven units in here or maybe less because this decreases by one every turn but i cannot get enough units in here quickly enough to completely get this down to zero before there is a rebellion so what I need to do is get yeah get some units in here and make sure that once the rebellion pops up I quickly strike them down. But it also means that I cannot really advance into the Imagawa province. And now that we've captured this province, something really nice has happened. That is, as you can see in the event messages. Great clan destroyed, the Tokugawa clan are destroyed. And this is nice because that means because they lost our last province, they also the army that was here has disappeared. So I don't have to fight that army, so I also don't really have to defend this province that much anymore. I mean I need to defend it because here is another enemy of me, and he is quite close by. He can just walk from his castle to my castle in one turn. He doesn't even have to wait in between. So I will keep the army which is already here, I will keep here. And I will start to train some army in this province. And this province is nice because it also has the, the pastures, which creates some wealth. It creates some trade resources, so superior war horses are a trade resource. And if I upgrade it, you can see it creates more war horses, more wealth, but also a charge bonus to all the cavalry you recruit in this province so because this province has only average soil it will not have very wealthy farms I will destroy the market here because yeah this is a wealth province or this is a cavalry recruitment province not a wealth province so I will destroy the market here I will build a new market in Owari which where is it I cannot do right now because I do not have the, the, the research way of chi. But I will get that next turn. So next turn I will build the market here. But in the meantime I can destroy the market here. Right click, that's not what I needed. That's just the uh, encyclopedia. So I will 
take the market and destroy it. And then I can build a cavalry recruitment center in this province. Which is always really nice. In the meantime, I will I will recruit some Bo Ashigaru and already a Matsuke. A Matsuke is a nice agent. Uh, he has a nice set of skills, which I can show you quickly. So, because he's rank 1, we cannot select anything yet, only starting at rank 2. But what I want to use this guy for is as a tax increaser, basically. So, he has skills. So, this one, Magistrate, adds for level 1 and level 2, it adds 1 cunning when overseeing towns. Which is really nice, because when you, when you put a Matsuke in a town, he will... Let's see the... Maybe the tooltip explains it as well. No, there's no tooltip. But the Matsuke, they will increase the tax rate of the province. So right now the tax rate here is 26%. So you see base rate of 30. And there's already minus 4.3 for administration costs. Because this is the second province already. So because we now have two provinces instead of one, we have an administration cost. Which decreases the tax rate. So... Once you put a Matsuke in a town, he can get the 0% of the character effects. He will bring that up. And he will bring it up by his base level, plus any bonuses he has. So he has the bonus of Magistrate, so extra cunning when overseeing towns. So once he is level 2, I will make him a Magistrate. And every level you get 2 points, so you can put in already immediately 2 points. Uh, so that will make him very effective at taxing provinces so as you can see this province has 1805 wealth this one has 2549 so it's much more effective to tax this province extra with him than doing that at this one at Mikawa so next turn because one strained he cannot walk yet so next turn he will move into Owari and improve the tax rate here then I will also build the market, which adds 200 wealth. So that uh, in that sense we will get even more wealth to tax here, which is very nice. And in that way with the Matsuke we can increase the tax rate to make sure that we can maintain our armies. Which is always a good thing, because you want as big, as big, as big armies as possible. Because the enemy will basically cheat in this game and be able to afford more expensive armies than that they have tax income which is yeah i think necessary because otherwise the game would be too easy but it can also be especially in the beginning of the game when there are still many many different enemies it can be very tricky so that's the main difficulty in the beginning of this game so right now you can see i still have a little bit of money let's invest that as well in one of our provinces so i'm here already improving the farms I will do that as well in this province because extra food is always good as you will see once these f this farm is done I will show you the effect of extra food and that is very nice so now I have only 11 yeah only 100 gold left yeah which is not enough to do anything and as I see I've already been playing for quite a while so I will stop the recording here and and we will go to the next turn in my next recording in my next video so hopefully i will see you later